So I guess the next question, if you have to leave, totally fine if you want to wave goodbye. Uh, the next question though that I have my doc here is, is the, um, what are the kind of skills that make a competitive CV in your opinions? Uh, we've already kind of talked about the papers and the grants. Um, and I think it was a nice emphasis, Caroline, that you talked about how Chris really said, like, you need to, you need to put what you've done into what you're applying for and show how you're going to take it to the next level or why your resources are there. But what else is there to kind of give you that extra, what other advice might you have to, to kind of for these early career kids over here? Yeah, mine. Um, yeah, so I think I know everyone's time is very limited, but if you can volunteer and do outreach stuff, so it's a lot of, um, you know, and that speaks volumes and that you're interested in sharing your science with, uh, you know, K through 12 classes. So, you know, elementary school, high school, or if you're willing to volunteer for local organizations or give seminars to local groups, um, that, that could be very helpful. Good suggestion. Yes, exactly. And also, if you're changing or thinking about or applying to a country that is different from your country, it is very important to really get to, to show that you're interested in fitting into that culture because it's, a, it's something that has actually limited many very good CVs in terms of papers but without any flexibility to the new lifestyle. And as Caroline said, that the ability to fit into the team to be able to communicate. So if you can keep that really, really wet, what Caroline said is extremely, extremely important. If you're basically, if you're changing culture. That's a good point. And I would say that even also for being through the process of looking at people here at Montana State, being able to adapt to what the state, like what do we need here, you know, like researching that we're a land grant university and understanding what the local rocks or local issues are, goes a long way in your application um, beyond just the papers and the grants. Um, that's huge. Uh, any other advice for CV builders? Maybe one more thing I could add on that's related to, to what you've been saying is, is having the opportunity to meet people. So, I mean, I know the situation right now is different, but, and we'll see how it evolves. But I know that I had the opportunity to go to a number of conferences and I was very pushed by my um, PhD advisors, always throwing me into groups of people, introducing me and those kinds of things. Um, not be shy when you go on field trips and, and speak with people because there are two values to this. One is that you learn more. You just um, increase your vision of the world and how things work and what people do and, and, and all of that. So it just makes you more, more uh, richer in your experience and uh, in your understanding of the cultural diversity in addition to the scientific diversity. And the other is that um, little by little people put uh, a face, a temper, or someone to your name and so you're not as anonymous as you used to be in that pile of CVs that they get. So it doesn't mean forcefully you inserting you everywhere, <laughs> but it just seize the opportunities when you have there. Don't be when you have them. Don't don't be shy and 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 just go speak. And especially I think geologists are a friendly batch. They'll always be happy to have a beer with someone, um, no matter their title or position. So seize those opportunities where they well present themselves. So this is a, a maybe maybe our last question. I'll have to check through my chat over here. But I think both my and Carolina brought up nice points about work-life balance, right? So sometimes this assistant professor life seems like it's very challenging to find work-life balance. And so there's advantages to being in other positions that potentially have a more rigid set schedule. So do you guys have any advice on how you manage it or um, if you've made decisions around it or I don't know, any, any kind of thoughts there? It's a loaded question, I guess. <laughs> I can start if you want. Um, I'm <laughs> sure, not sure yeah. it's the best advice. <laughs> I'm not convinced that I'm doing this in, in the best way, but I think what I've, come to realize is that you can't do everything 
And once you realize that you can't do everything, and no matter if you want to, you will be dropping things. And if you make a decision consciously of what you're dropping, you might be better off than just dropping them because you were not able to pick them all up. Um, so I think the first painful thing is to realize you can't do it all. <laughs> and then the next painful step is to decide what you, what you want to drop in there. Um, so that you actually make space for the things you want to have in there, but don't have hard deadlines, like this grant submission, grant submission deadline, or like this uh, financial statement to submit for your project, or like this class that's coming at this date. So you have a number of things with very rigid deadlines that end up putting a lot of pressure on you. Whereas there's no deadline on your family unless you're about to get divorced, but then it's maybe already too late. Um, there's, there's no deadline on a lot of the things that are important um, to you, um, but that you might end up dropping. So I think um, that's one way I've started to see it is, is realize what I'm dropping unconsciously because I'm trying to juggle with everything, but I can't. So consciously decide to put limits on the others. And it's okay if this class is not perfect. And um, it's okay if I didn't add this 15th grant to the list. <laughs> and at least I had a wonderful time with my family or I actually had time to write a paper for myself. <laughs> so I think that's, that's how I'm trying to approach it now to improve my balance. Cool. Any other kind of comments on that? Maybe, we're all getting tired. Maybe just uh, just be aware of of your body language. Uh, the body tells you a lot when you're reaching those those limits. Actually, so I think the, the the question is excellent because we all have problems in that in that balance. But um, being conscious about how you eat, how you sleep, and if something is not going well, then is is the alarm to really pay attention of those important things that don't have deadlines and are extremely important in life. But it's very difficult, yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, well, with that, I think we should thank our panelists for speaking. This was really fun and it was great to get to know all of you a little bit better. Um, I think if you have residual questions, there might be a way for us to, we'll kind of take them out and, um, Hopefully one day they'll be answered in some capacity or another. The ECR people behind the scenes have got it. So um, anyway, thank you guys so much. This was wonderful. Um, tell your friends if they missed it, that it's will be recorded and will be posted, so. Thank you very much for having me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. And I wish uh, everyone good luck finding their dream positions.